So within the actual, not only the city of Ashtabula, but the entire county, there has been an emphasis placed on what we call placemaking. So areas that are destinations and Walnut Beach, unfortunately for, for many, many years has not been preserved and has not been maintained to the quality that we have liked it to. And of course, that comes with municipal funding and state and government funding. So when these grants became available, this was really our only opportunity to do justice to Walnut Beach. Um, the community has always supported Walnut Beach, um, but have always liked to see more. And I think we've been able to provide that now because this grant funding was available and because of the partnerships that we did have and truly because of the work of, of our staff that went out and really uh, put the pressure on to, to make sure those funds came to Ashtabula County and to our city to do this type of restoration. Um, you know, land is something that you just don't keep creating, so we have to take care of what we have here. And this is definitely an area that we didn't want to see development uh, right along our coastline. And this is an area that, that we know needs to be enjoyed, uh, needs to be, be able to bring students here to teach a lesson about ecology and nature itself. And I think what we're doing is a, is a great teaching tool, as well as a, a destination for our tourism uh, for our tourism visitors to come in and see what nature really is about and what, what this place could, would have been like uh, you know, before we started putting parking lots and everything else all over the place. Um, this is a great site for bird watching as well. Uh, we're even coordinating right now with uh, different organizations to do bike trails. Uh, bike trails will be coming all the way down from southern Ohio up to Ashtabula and one of the goals right now is to have that bike trail end on Walnut Beach. So it actually... It's behind me you can see um, a dune habitat and this is basically what it would have looked like historically. Uh, these, uh, the extent of these dunes really hasn't changed all that much. There, there are some non-native species up here on this dune but it's, it's relatively uh, undisturbed. So there's a lot of the native dominant dune forming or plants that are pretty common up here. Um, American beach grass and switchgrass primarily are the dominant natives here. Um, so the extent of this is essentially what it would have been uh, post or pre-settlement. So we can see uh, on this side it's highly altered. Um, there are still dune communities and dune plants pretty common and back here is the the dune at Walnut Beach but you can see that the dune is pushed far back from where it it would be if it was undisturbed um, it's probably about 80 feet or so receded back from where it would initially have started so the the dunes would have originally extended roughly from uh, where we looked on the other side, uh, basically all the way out to that uh, lighthouse structure out there at the end of the break wall. Um, so there, there were roughly about four miles, three, three and a half miles of dunes here at uh, Walnut Beach. I was born and raised here in Ashtabula and actually lived just up the street. So Walnut Beach was always the same to me. It, uh, I never knew it any other way. Um, there was always a great big huge parking lot that was underutilized. Um, there wasn't a, a whole lot of prettiness, so I'm really looking forward to the dune area and all of the natural species coming up. And the, the first time I was here, uh, actually meeting with uh, Jim and Mary here, um, I immediately uh, fell in love with the dune itself. Uh, dunes are extremely unique habitats, especially along uh, the Lake Erie shoreline. There's, there's not very many of them left, especially in this quality. Um, so it's pretty high quality dune. Uh, and I mean, when I first got here, I, I noticed some of the, the same issues Mary was bringing up. I mean, it's a very well-loved, well-used, was a very well-used, uh, well-loved park. Um, so it's ha it had its maintenance issues. Um, and I think what I really loved about uh, meeting with these folks here was that they wanted to make this positive change, um, not only you know, for recreation, but also for the natural communities that are here as well. You can see behind me is this drainage swale. Um, so this was, before construction and restoration, this was the outlet, the drainage from the parking lot. So this drainage carried all the undesirable 
refuse from the parking lot out onto the beach and directly into the, the swimming area uh, for the beach. And so that was one of the major concerns the city had was trying to prevent that parking lot drainage from going into the swimming area, uh, which is one of the reasons they designed all the infiltration areas and then this large dune behind us to kind of act as a barrier to shift water to flow into a big uh, infiltration cell where the water and all that refuse can you know, pile up and uh, soak in without harming uh, people. So you can see behind us, um, we're actually standing where there used to be a parking lot. Uh, so in this area alone, there was you know several acres of impervious surface. Um, so there, were, there was a parking lot here, there were basketball courts, a skate park, um, a little turnaround and all of that was essentially removed. Some of it was replaced with a you know, new parking lot with infiltration cells going down the middle of the parking lot to provide for increased infiltration um, and to support water quality. Um, we're also standing on top of uh, an extension of the dune that was created. So you can see um, to the north, there's actually, that's where the old dune ended. Um, and this area, was built up uh, by a construction engineering crew to extend the dune uh, roughly another 300 feet. So another benefit of having dunes and dune vegetation is that they uh, are natural uh, sand anchors, so they prevent wind erosion of sand. So this is particularly important where you have a large developed uh, beach. Um, so an unvegetated beach will have constant sand blowing off of it. So that sand, you know, it could end up on parking lots, it could end up in storm drains, it could end up um, on roads, and it could become a maintenance headache. So uh, dunes are a very unique habitat, uh, particularly in northeast Ohio, Ashtabula County in specific, specifically. So there are 27 miles of uh, shoreline in Ashtabula County. About seven miles of that so going back to 1933, about seven miles of that was considered, uh, you know, large beaches. So that was anywhere between, you know, 100 and 600 to 800 feet wide. Uh, those beaches were specifically at Walnut Beach, uh, Conneaut, the mouth of Conneaut Creek, uh, and then down near the Ashtabula Lake County line, there was uh, a beach that extended from the line east to Coles Creek, where present-day Geneva State Park is. Um, currently, most of those those stations have been either eliminated or developed, or uh, they've changed land use. Um, so Walnut Beach is actually one of the, the larger remaining parcels. So behind me you can see uh, essentially what's a pile of sticks covered with some sand, but um, you can see that this is how sand drops out. So all around me you can see this really coarse graded material, but where the wind speed changes, which was in this tumble of wave deposited debris and sticks, um, all the fine grained sands drop out. And you can see there's a dramatic change in color um, from this really dark coarse material to this really light fine grained material. Um, and this is also a technique that can be used in dune restoration, which is called uh, seeding. So you can essentially uh, insert or install a structure uh, that allows for sand to drop out behind it by changing wind speed. So you can use snow fence, stick piles, what have you. Um, so you then plant this area with dune grass. Uh, the dune grass will maintain uh, that dune and help it grow by trapping additional sand. So when the project first started, um, we were told what this dune is going to look like, but um, in all actuality, I have no idea what it's going to look like five years from now. Um, so uh, five years from now, this, uh, this barren moonscape <laughs> will, will look significantly different. Um, so our, our plants we're gonna be putting in are going to establish a variety of communities. Um, primarily what we're looking for here, based on moisture levels that we're seeing out here in the soil, 
is we're, g- we're going to have like open four dune communities. So uh, essentially grass dominated communities, perennial grassland communities. There's also going to be um, some interdunal wetlands uh, potentially that will encompass maybe uh, an acre of the area. So that's going to be beautiful grassy sedgy fields with uh, a variety of wildflowers and you know all the the associated pollinators and bird life that you'd expect. Uh, in addition there'll be uh, in five years there'll probably be some well-established trees and shrubs especially um, out towards the road here. So By that point, you know, you should be seeing, you know, 10 to 15 foot tall trees. So a young, a young woodland, uh, kind of, kind of what we see at the edges here behind us will essentially be what we'll see out there. Uh, We'll also have uh, a walking trail, uh, the the interpretive nature trail um, with some signage. There'll be a nice split rail fence and a pathway that leads visitors uh, at at the base of the, the dune that we just established here into the existing remnant dune um, on top of which there'll be there'll be a uh, bird viewing platform uh, for viewers uh, potentially for viewers this is best case scenario uh, for viewers uh, and bird watchers wildlife watchers in general to uh, you know have the best vantage point to look out over the lake uh, so that's that's what I'm hoping for in the next five years. And I think that at that point, when we see what this has all come together in five years, we can show what it was before this project, what it looks like now, and to potential funders for other projects that we want to do in five years to continue along with our master plan uh, and to complete that master plan, I think it's going to be much, much easier for us to go after that type of funding and show that we were successful and show that we managed those grants properly and that we're still maintaining what we did uh, you know, at this time in 2017, when it comes to the 2021 or 25 or wherever that case may be when more funding is available, uh, we will have the proof of concept uh, and show that we can, we can do what we say we're going to do.